Hey there everybody, welcome to Tuck Tucks, Trinkets, and Terrain. My name is David, and for this video I decided to dip into my skeletons and skulls uh, from my bits box and make a monster. Uh, I ended up with this guy beside me. I think he turned out sufficiently creepy, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I did and how I did it, and I hope you enjoy. So the start of this project are one of these rat skeletons. Uh, I got these at Target in their like little dollar section that's normally up front. Uh, I went with the one that was sort of standing up more, which didn't end up mattering in the long run, but uh, the intention was there. I then trimmed off the tail head and both front arms because uh, I wanted to change all of those pieces essentially. For the tail, I'm going to use the tail of this dinosaur skeleton that I believe I got out of like an arcade machine somewhere um, and I'm just gonna glue that straight onto the back uh, just to give it a more uh, you know bony looking tail instead of that long skinny rat tail. For the head um, I trimmed off the ears and then used a rasp to sort of smooth it out. I ended up using the other head as well from the other skeleton to sort of give it a etten you know two-headed monster look but then to extend them out and make sure both heads uh, will fit. Uh, I believe these were like leftover bits from something, uh, but same similar toy. Uh, and I could just glue those onto the back of the skulls to create some necks. And then to add just a little bit of uh, variety to the skulls, I just chopped one of the jaw bones sort of in half and then glued it open. And then after gluing the neck pieces onto the back there, and then just glued those straight on to uh, the front of the body. Uh, this whole project I do use super glue as well as baking soda to get that sort of instant reaction. Uh, and then I wanted to add a little bit more interest to the tail. So I've got these other little dinosaur skeletons that I believe are from Walgreens, uh, again during Halloween time. Uh, and I just clipped a couple tails off and I'm going to glue those at the end of the main tail uh, to give it a sort of uh, forked trident look. And then I just leaned into that even more and added a bunch of these tails all along the spine to create a, just an interesting sort of ridge along its spine instead of just a long open blank area. So here's where we're at with the double head and sort of uh, replacement tail spine section all along the back there. A little bit more of an imposing figure. Uh, but next up I wanted to work on the arms. Um, so these skeletons are from the dollar store. They come in a garland so they're basically all tied together and you're supposed to like hang them up. Uh, but I'm going to harvest a bunch of uh, legs, arms, and then a single rib cage and pelvis. Uh, all these pieces will make up both arms. Uh, for one side, I thought it would be cool if the rib cage was sort of the uh, grasping hand at the end of it. So I've cut out the sternum and I'm just bending the ribs open to give it a more claw look. And you see I've also sharpened all of the individual ribs to make it a bit more menacing. And then I'm just going to glue a couple of these leg bones in to create the uh, forearm section. And then while that was just setting and make sure it was 100% dry, I glued a couple more leg bones together to create the upper arm. Just gluing all these pieces together um, on both ends as well as the middle just to make sure they're nice and strong. Again, using baking soda here to really just make sure everything was quick and easy and secure. Now for the other side, the other arm, uh, I wanted to use the hands here, but they're a little flat and just uninteresting. So uh, by using an open flame and holding the hand pretty far away, uh, I managed to sort of melt these into a more grasping claw shape. Uh, the one on screen here gets a little fat and chubby just from it melting a little too quickly. Um, so I ended up not using this one. Um, you can see here is more better representation of what I was trying to go for. Just a little bit more in action pose. Uh, and then I thought that it would be pretty cool to use individual arms as fingers uh, with the pelvis as sort of the wrist. So you can see here I've glued a bunch of hands onto the pelvis here to form the uh, second claw on the creature. And then again, just gluing a bunch of, I think these are the arm bones together for the forearm. And then another big chunk of bones for the upper arm. And then I just attached everything together basically. Um, for the rib cage, you can see I've put it in a position where it'll be sort of resting on that uh, to give another point of contact for the base. And then the other side, I thought it would be 
cool if it was just reaching out like it was trying to grab an adventure or something like that. So that is that all glued together. Next up, I wanted to replace the legs as well, make them a bit bulkier. They were looking a little out of place with everything else. Uh, so using a pelvis and spine as well as a couple leg bones, I bulked out the bottom uh, foot there and then using a couple more arm bones for the upper leg, uh, just make it a little more interesting and make it match the rest of the, the body here. Did that exact same thing for the other side and then glued them in place to try and make it a more dynamic pose like it's slowly inching its way forward, trying to grab whatever's ahead of it. And then took that whole thing outside and hit it with a black spray primer and set it aside just to make sure it was 100% fully uh, cured, all the glue was set before I moved on to painting. Now while that was drying, I needed to make a base. So I cut out this long oval shape. I then glued that chipboard onto a piece of dollar store foam core. Uh, this would not only strengthen it, prevent it from warping, but it'll also give me a nice material to texture. I glued on a few XPS foam rocks and then textured the whole thing with some aluminum foil base coated it with some black paint and Mod Podge. And then from here is just sort of my standard stone color. Uh, so this is a base coat of a dark gray. And then I did a overbrush with a lighter gray. But at this point, I decided to change things up a bit. Um, and I decided to do a green dry brush. Uh, if you've seen my uh, skull cliff video, uh, this is exactly how I did those caves. So I thought it would be cool to match this base to those terrain pieces since they're both skeleton skull related we can use them together once the green dry brush was down i hit the whole thing with some black wash and then did one more final dry brush with a off white so after that i went back to the skeleton itself um, i'm going to paint the whole thing with a i think this is technically parchment color which is just an off white sort of bone color but while i'm doing this i just want to remind you to please hit the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing future videos i post crafting videos every other friday hit the like button if you're enjoying the video leave a comment with a suggestion of maybe something that i could have done differently or better or maybe a future project that you want to see me try and tackle and try this with your friends if you think they'd enjoy it as well anything you do really helps out the channel and i do appreciate it after my uh, bone base coat was all dry I did a pretty heavy wash with some Agrax Earthshade. Uh, this is my preferred method for painting bone. I find the Agrax Earthshade gives it a really nice color once it's all dry. I then did two final dry brushes, one with an ivory all over everything, and then a second with just pure white, um, just on the top bit, sort of a directional highlight dry brush. I then used a bright green to give the eyes some pupils and then did just a tiny amount of dry brushing around the eye socket uh, to give it a nice source lighting and make it look like it was glowing, uh, which also adds a nice pop of color to the otherwise sort of white and brown um, color scheme that we've got going on. So he was all ready to go on to the base, but to give the base a little more interest, I painted up a few extra bones left over. Uh, they set exact same way that I had the main piece, uh, and then I also glued down some of those red grass tufts that I used on my skull caves as well. Again, just to have both sort of terrain pieces match. Once all that was dry, it was just a simple matter of gluing the monster to his base. And this is all done. I really like monster project like this where I can just sort of go wild. I don't have a plan and just use whatever I've got lying around. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, I think it's super intimidating, especially uh, considering its size next to a regular D&D sort of player character mini. I will say that I wish I had a different variety of skeletons on hand so I can add sort of different uh, parts to it, I guess. Maybe like a bird beak or something like that. But overall, I'm very happy with it. It's a great monster to throw down on the table. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, I do have an Instagram account if you want to check that out. I post in-progress pictures and other things that I've got going on. I also have an Etsy shop where you can pick up uh, dungeon tiles and accessories to use in your tabletop games, as well as other sort of gifts that I've got over there. Both of those links can be found in the description below. But more than anything, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next time.